15 underrated officers sounds like an awful lot, but currently there are 181 officers and counting in Star Trek Fleet Command. We're going to address just over 8% of what currently is available in the game. We expect there will be a slew of new officers all throughout 2023 that will make this an even smaller percentage of the total population. You are almost guaranteed to disagree at some point in time with this list, if not all of it entirely. These are the opinions of myself and others behind the scenes here at BHD8 Gaming, and we want to hear what you have to say throughout this video as well. We recently went and dug through all the officers anyways to provide a score for Stewie Doo and Lube's awesome officer tool that is out there. The link is down in the description for that tool as it always is. We think very highly of that tool and it's a great honor for Stewie Doo and Lube to reach out to us and want our opinions on how these officers should be ranked. We've noticed as we did that, that there are these 15 officers that either we vary quite widely from what other people have ranked these officers at, or we just feel like it would be a really good idea to make sure that especially newer players keep their eyes on these officers because they may have even appreciated in value a little bit over the time that we've played the game. So in no particular order, we're going to dive right in. Here we go. Number one is going to be Deanna Troy. She has high health. She's got niche traits for away teams as the only officer with the empathic trait. Currently, you'll find it in the form trade agreement assignment where you'll get extra latinum when you crit or the double agent interrogation where you get rare officer shards when you crit. But mostly her out of box usefulness at rank one level one in our mod is, is why we feel she's frequently underrated. Criticals are scary, but if they're unlikely or completely impossible to occur, then not so much. With good communication, Pike Moreau Gala will completely turn those criticals against that target. They'll do less damage with a critical than they would with a normal hit. However, if your alliance suffers from the same lack of communication that many other alliances do, then a good backup is to try to keep crits from happening at all. You reduce the crit chance by a flat 15% with just Troy on her own. You get an extra 5% with full synergy on each side there, which will get you at 25% maximum. That's enough to reduce the crit chance to zero out of everything except for the Borg Armadas. Those are going to require 30%. You're going to have to use 9 of 11 with full synergy for those. However, if you're running multiple Armadas at once whenever the Borg events roll around, then it's not a bad idea to keep her as a backup to at least help out if nobody else brought nine. And real quick, for the record, your Federation Klingon Swarm and Jim Hadar Armadas all have a 10% crit chance, so if one person brings Troy without any synergy, then you go ahead and negate the crit chance there. Doomsday Armadas have a 12% chance, same thing, just need one Troy. Your Exchange Armadas and Cardassian Rares and Epics have a 20% chance, so with Troy and one of those side card officers having the plus 5% synergy there, that's enough to go ahead and negate them as well. Remember that your uncommons, you still want to use Pike Moreau Gala because they will get that ramping crit chance as it goes. They basically are con on the armadas. And then as we already touched on, it won't work as well for your Borg armadas. 9 of 11 is still superior. Next, we have Keenster. His stats are very heavily weighted towards defense. It's extremely easy to source him by just doing your daily missions every single day. Before too long, you'll start earning transporter patterns because you'll have enough shards to be able to max him. Both of his traits are seen on a multitude of away team assignments, and his captains and officer abilities are pretty lackluster, so you won't miss him whenever you do send him away. Then we have Jordi LaForge. Now, without getting Jayla and a Franklin involved in some extremely niche situations, Jordi will be heading up your max loot crews for Armadas in the game. That's for Armadas that are guaranteed to be successful. Check with everybody else that's in that Armada. Make sure that it's guaranteed before you just show up with this crew, or you'll probably lose it, and people will be pretty upset. Doesn't really do you any good to get a bunch of bonus loot when you don't actually win the armada so make sure that you are coordinating with the rest of the people in the armada if you're going to bring a max loot crew the reason he's on this list here is because you still want to make sure that you are ranking and leveling him up when possible a lot of people don't recommend to do that to get your loot however your loot distribution in armadas is based off of what percentage of the total power your ship has so having Jordy at a higher level will give him more stats, which will get your bonuses maxed out on your ship. When the loot's divided, you'll get more of it, and then you'll apply that bonus to your share. Now we have Kirk. While the morale crew in many cases will start to fall off in usefulness towards the end of your 30s, Kirk's away team assignment usefulness for the coveted lead expedition assignment especially means that you will be using him for pretty much the duration of your Star Trek Fleet Command career because you'll be getting as many of those away team credits as you can, trading those for your ship blueprints. That's one of the easier ways. We've already done videos on that as well, on how to go ahead and pick up these ships, especially once you get further on in the game. Carol Marcus is another very decent health away team assignment rock star, especially because just like Keenser, her officer's ability, her captain's maneuver, are not something that you're really going to miss when you've got her away doing other things or crammed below deck on a ship to go ahead and give you more health. So she's a solid choice for you to cram some trade XP into as well if you have extra lying around. And you'll definitely want to make sure that you're keeping up with her level when you're able to. She may not be the officer you need to pour everything you have into, but don't neglect her too much because she does have a lot of use for that health stat and those away team traits. Bator's another big one. 2-4 stun will help tremendously while you are scooping bases. However, if you have an amalgam, 
Bator's ability to go ahead and supercharge the Amalgam's ability, especially once you have got her ranked up quite a bit, cannot be overstated. It is amazing. You'll want to make sure that you have her rank up. You don't necessarily have to level her because your Amalgam should not be in combat. Just as a side note, you'll want to go ahead and take two off of the 2-4 Stong crew and switch Bator in. I like to keep her below decks on my Amalgam even so I can do that pretty quickly. Doesn't really matter who's in the captain's seat because you're going to be using officer's abilities from all three of them anyways. Next we have Gorkon. While Lorca is the best source of hull breach in the game, especially reliably, it takes a while to go ahead and get your hands on him or get him tiered up enough that he's going to actually be superior to Gorkon for a while at least. So you want to make sure that you're not neglecting Gorkon. He is your second best option for hull breach in the game. He's not going to be wasted either. You're going to use that attack stat for a long time to come. He has plenty of away team assignments you can throw him on once you've picked up Lorca as your main source of hull breach. Moving on to Reginald Barkley, this card is much like the character's cinematic presence. Probably at first you won't think very much of him, but he'll slowly grow on you. Most of your miners will have at least one slot below deck. You'll have him at around level 5 minimum pretty easy by spending Latinum or Ship XP if you have it laying around. There's no other officer in the game currently that's going to go ahead and give you an increase to your protected cargo, even if it's not a lot, without taking up a bridge slot. So he's kind of a freebie, plus 30% to your base protected cargo at a minimum once you have him unlocked. We're moving on to Nero now. His burning ability was broken for a very long time. It's not now. He's very similar to what we had with Gorkon. Giorgio is going to come along at some point in time once you get her unlocked and tiered, and she's going to be a more reliable way to proc burning on your ships. But until then, Nero is the best that you have. And just like with Gorkon, it is not a waste to go ahead and rank and tier Nero because eventually you'll go ahead and pull him off of being your big health stat and use him for your away team assignments. That same one that we had Kirk on your lead expedition to go ahead and get massive amounts of those away team credits. Now we've got Helvia. She's probably the only common officer that we'll talk about on here. In many cases, you won't really care that much about the warp speed, but if you are doing some long distance raiding, raiding into somebody's territory where you can't actually move your base there, then it becomes very important to go ahead and get your ship to that scoop really quickly and bring it back out of the system. Helvia is great for that. She's also good to go ahead and cram on whichever ship you're using to go map out those dark systems that you haven't hit yet. So you don't necessarily have to put any levels into her at all, but you probably want to go ahead and rank her potentially all the way up to rank five. You can leave her at rank five level one if you wanted to, because you're not going to be using her for the stats. On a similar note, we've got TOS Scotty. If you go ahead and slap him on your highest warp range explorer, then he'll go ahead and push that a little bit further for you. I like to use him with Cadet Scotty and Grush. Go ahead and get some synergy if you don't have Grush or you haven't been tearing up Grush to go ahead and get that higher warp range. I usually put that on my discovery if I'm trying to pull a ship out there to complete a mission, do some sort of daily whatever's going on. It's nice to go ahead and have TOS Scotty available to push that warp range a little bit further. Make sure that he's on an explorer or he's not going to be doing anything for you though and you don't really have to rank or level him. You're not going to get much use out of him outside of that warp range increase. Now we have Strange New Worlds Una. She's a little weird. She was originally intended to be sourced just through incursions, but we've seen her in, I believe, two event stores now. I think she was in a treasury unlock at some point in time, but don't quote me on that. We couldn't verify that before we started filming this. She'll likely replace your Strange New Worlds La'an on your full synergy Strange New World hostile cruise with Pike and whoever. Having those shorter trips between hostiles is extremely useful to go ahead and do all your dailies, your events, whatever you're trying to do much faster, even if you're just out there grinding for whatever you're doing. It's nice to have a shorter trip from one hostile to the next because of that increased impulse speed. Even more than that, it's nice to be able to pull Strange New Worlds La'an off of your Strange New Worlds hostile crew and keep her permanently housed below decks on your amalgam. We've also heard great reports that you can put Claws, your captain, with Curon and Strange New Worlds Una, and you'll have a really great speed crew that won't hull breach your ship the moment the combat begins. Moving on to Beckett Mariner, while Tindy is likely the best lower decks officer for almost all scenarios, Beckett Mariner has kind of been overshadowed by her a little bit, but she's still a great card in her own right. Her attack stat is one of the highest that we have in the game still, especially once you get her maxed out. But the big benefit here is that even if you've already hit your full attack bonus on a ship, if you have Mariner down there, which of course because she has that big attack stat, she'll help you reach that sooner, then you can go ahead and push a little bit beyond that because then her lower deck ability will trigger in and give you an increase to your attack beyond what your normal cap would be. We expect that throughout 2023, there will be plenty of new officers with lower deck abilities, but it's hard to imagine a scenario where one of the main characters from the series lower deck that is the reason that we had this mechanic introduced into the game in the first place is made obsolete because of somebody else's new lower deck ability. Moving on to Eurydice, this is one that I had undervalued for a very long time in the game. She is very useful in a support ship, such as your Defiant, running Picard, Beverly, Eurydice, with Synergy, Pike, Picard, you get a guaranteed trigger at tier 3 for her. 
and a 99% chance at tier 2. Without Pike's Synergy, this is not Picard, we're just talking about Pike here, you'll need to max her out for a guaranteed proc. She is good on your damage ramp up crews, such as Pike, Mud, and Eurydice on a battleship, something like that, because of the way that she functions. We're going to round out our list with 5 of 11. This is an officer that there's not really anybody in the game telling you that you just don't need to pick up at any point in time. The reason why we're adding her to this list, however, is that she seems to have gotten even more valuable now that the Solar Armadas are a thing. 5-6 Khan is a very strong Armada crew that most people will have access to, and putting her on your strongest ship will get you that extra loot depending on what tier she's at. She starts at 20% and ends up at 100% by the time that you go ahead and max her out, if you ever do. That's very difficult to do. I know many people in the game who have spent a lot of money that don't have her completely maxed. If you're running in somebody else's Armada and you're trying to get as much loot as you possibly can, then running a Franklin or Franklin A with Jayla in the captain's seat and 5 of 11 next to it is going to give you a huge boost to your loot drop by the time that you're done there. The problem with that is that your Franklin Franklin A usually has a very small power score, so when the loot's divided, you're going to get a much smaller portion. Probably the better way to do it is to take your strongest ship to that armada with Jordy, half synergy with whoever you've got, a non-engineering TNG officer on the deck with Jayla to go ahead and get the maximum amount of loot that you can without using that Jayla crew. But as we've already stated, please don't show up to an armada without having cleared that beforehand that you're using a max loot crew because if people are depending on you for any kind of support or for damage, then it's possible that you're going to fail the armada because you didn't fulfill your role there. Just make sure that you're communicating before you show up to an armada with a loot crew, please. Now, take all of our opinions with a grain of salt. Always get a second opinion from a trusted source before you alter your five-year plan here on which officers you want to build, which ones you don't care about at all. Which of these officers did you find the most shocking? Let us know in the comments down below and hit that like button for us too if you would, please. Our supporters are incredible and make everything that we do here possible. Choose to live, my friends, and we'll see you again soon.